Hello guys, in today's video, we will learn about the designing of the suspension spring. For the designing of the suspension spring, we first have to calculate the spring stiffness. And then using that spring stiffness, we need to obtain uh, the spring properties like the wire dia, bean coil dia, spring pitch and all the other properties of the spring. In suspension, we mainly use compression springs. But in suspension, during jounce, compression of the spring occur, while in rebound, extension of the spring occur. So we can observe that a spring is subjected to both compression and extension during the suspension. So the problem is how can we use a compression spring in such a situation which has both extension and compression because compression spring is basically designed for the compression load. So to use them in such situation which had both compression and extension is a little problematic. Uh, for that we look at the second property of the compressor spring that is the operating length should always be less than the natural length of the spring what it means that if suppose the length of the spring is 250 mm uh, then no at no time during the course of its use it should exceed 250 mm the length should exceed 250 mm suppose I install a spring in a vehicle without any initial compressor so in case of jounce it will compress further but in case of rebound it it cannot extend because if it's extended it will exceed the natural length of the spring so what we do we give an initial compression of the spring suppose we give an initial compression of the spring of about 25 mm then in case of jounce it will compress further in case of rebound it will extend to 25 mm then it will reach its natural length then it cannot extend any further so we can conclude with this a discussion that the whatever initial compression we give to the spring becomes my wheel travel in case of rebound. We'll use that in further calculations. So this is the formula f is equal to 1 by 2 pi root under k by m. This is a very very common formula which we use in a spring mass system. Uh, in this case f is my uh, wheel frequency k is my wheel rate and in the next equation I made the k as the subject so k is equal to f square 4 pi m now in this equations uh, m is known as the m is the mass of uh, the vehicle on the wheel which is being calculated for which we, we are calculating the frequency uh, f is my frequency which is unknown and k is my wheel rate which is unknown so we have to assume something so uh, we start with an assumption of a wheel frequency to be approximately 145 cycle per minute so with that we can find wheel rate now our major concern is not a wheel rate but the spring rate so in order to find the spring rate from the wheel rate we need to define certain new terms so motion ratio is equal to wheel travel by spring travel now we know that wheel rate is the vertical force per unit vertical displacement at the location along the spindle corresponding to the wheel center line so using these definitions we can say f wheel is equal to k wheel into wheel travel which is very very analogous to f is equal to kx and for spring of course f is spring is equal to k spring into spring travel here the wheel travel means the vertical displacement of the wheel now we need to find the relation between f wheel and f spring in terms of motion ratio because uh, we want to find a relationship between the k spring k wheel and the motion ratio so f wheel into wheel travel is equal to f spring into spring travel this is this equation comes from the principle of virtual work uh, we know fx is equal to energy so f wheel is the vertical force acting on the wheel and wheel travel is the vertical displacement in the same way f spring is the uh, spring is the force which is acting along the axis of the spring and the sp spring travel is the compression along the axis of the spring so from the virtual work we get this equation as f wheel into wheel travel equal to f spring into spring travel now uh, by substituting uh, these in the first and second equations and dividing that we finally get k spring is equal to k wheel into motion ratio square this is very important question, equations and this is very often used in the vehicle dynamics so uh, 
in this equation the uh, wheel rate is known so uh, there are two unknowns k spring and the motion ratio so we need to assume one of these to uh, proceed ahead for this we assume the motion ratio to be 1 is to 1 and with this assumption k spring can be calculated now what if this uh, k spring is obtained that can satisfy the uh, condition that uh, the wheel weight should not be very much should not be very less but as discussed earlier that whatever initial compression will be given that will be my wheel travel so uh, if so we have to check whether the wheel travel what we are obtaining from it is desirable or not so uh, the next part of the uh, calculation is to do the sag calculations so for sag calculation compression of the spring is equal to weight on the each spring divided by the spring rate suppose it comes at 22.5 and what my desired wheel travel is 37.5 m so now uh, the problem statement becomes that with 22.5 m of spring compression we need to have 37.5 m of wheel travel so this will not work with 1 is to 1 motion ratio we have to change the motion ratio to get this type of effect so my new motion ratio becomes 37.5 divided by 22.5 now my motion ratio is changed but my spring stiffness doesn't change so spring spring frequency need not to be calculated again but the wheel weight needs to be calculated again and so is the uh, wheel frequency if the wheel frequency exceeds, if it comes out to be too large, then the whole process needs to be iterated once again. Now, with this, I think uh, the, we can easily calculate the spring stiffness. If you want to know more regarding how to make springs in solid works, uh, how to do simulations in MATLAB, uh, how to calculate uh, the hard points, how to obtain whether uh, it's uh, correct or not then please encourage us and uh, please like us.